Hello, I'm Professor John Parkin and I'm the Chair of the Editorial Advisory Panel of the Municipal Engineer Journal. I'm going to present to you the editorial for the March 2014 edition uh, of the journal. As engineers, whether we like it or not, we're engaging much more than simply providing technical solutions. Our uh, solutions tend not to be regarded as engineering artefacts by citizens who use them though, but rather as simply the means of carrying out daily living. It remains then perhaps a hidden uh, supposition that we're in fact social engineers who shape communities that we inhabit. This edition of the journal contains papers which all, in their own way, help explain how we shape community. The first paper by Da Cruz and Marquez makes the point that delivering services is the aim of local authorities and that public-private partnerships are helpful for efficiently providing quality services. In particular, the authors review the strengths and weaknesses of what they call institutionalised public-private partnerships or IPPPs. That is to say, joint ventures involving both the public and private sectors. It's somewhat ironic, therefore, um, that the authors feel it necessary to note, albeit parenthetically, that the achievement of social goals is unprofitable. But it is clear that their sophisticated understanding of complex process management is in fact about finding the perfect equilibrium between, on the one hand, efficiency, and on the other hand, social concerns. Their very interesting and well-referenced paper concludes that IPPPs are best in cases of extreme uncertainty and complexity. Mugisha, in the second paper, provides an in-depth analysis of the management performance technique for one critically important service sector, water supply, in Africa. Current typical methodologies for performance might simply assume that positive trends in efficiency indicators such as connection efficiency and billing efficiency are a sign of improvement. However, Mugisha suggests that aggregate assessment using a stochastic frontier analysis uh, distance function will reveal the trajectory of overall performance in a more holistic way. In the third paper, Ng et al, uh, draw together the provider and the provided for through a discussion of public consultation in Hong Kong, which they find um, tends to be routine and rather bureaucratic. Case studies include a bypass, a cruise terminal and a cultural district, each of which is likely to raise concerns because of the transfer of interests to the private sector and impacts on the environment. Low engagements may result, so say respondents to their survey, from respectfulness of uh, Confucianism, and this is despite uh, innovative interbase, in internet based communication methods. The authors suggest that pretense of consultation can perhaps be at its highest when the emphasis is on the technical aspects of the project rather than their social, economic, and environmental impacts. In revealing this, the authors indicate that we are, as noted in the introduction, engineering society rather than simply engineering the physical fabric. The final two papers both have a transport theme with Silver and co-authors providing evidence and a model for being more careful about estimation of pedestrian speed in design. This is clearly very, very user orientated and is a good example of the way that engineering design has to account very specifically for the nature of human beings and the way that we negotiate our environment on foot. The practical findings have been used in a study for the provision of light rapid transit. Emusa and Kadangwe uh, diagnose problems with road contracts in Malawi and conclude that two critical issues holding back quality of provision are Firstly, delayed payments, and secondly, professional competence. In addition, there are issues around access to credit facilities and the lack of professional management. A greater degree of education and a closer focus on complying with contractual terms 
would hopefully, they suggest, resolve these issues and allow for enhanced provision of transport in Malawi. Finally, we returned wholeheartedly to the theme of community with a review by myself of the book A Theology of the Built Environment, Justice and Empowerment by Professor Tim Gorringe. Now, uh, a book on theology is perhaps not the first uh, book that civil engineers might turn to, but it provides a thorough and very well-grounded treatise on the importance of values and ethics in the creation of the built environment. The central message is that the environments we shape, in turn, shape us. And the, in the engineer's bright eye, and he quotes Ellel at that point, has a significant part to play in this shaping. Overall then, the evidence from the papers in this edition of the journal repeat to us in a number of ways the importance of high ethical standards um, with a focus on the end user. Um, and that focus uh, needs to be whether uh, the overall issues are to do with contracts, technical issues, or issues in the commercial sphere of municipal engineering. Thank you.